morning, everybody. How are you doing this morning? Good morning. Hello. Y'all, y'all look like you're really, really relaxing. I don't know if I, if, if I'm on. It does look like you guys are really relaxing. Well, I'm glad that you are here worshiping along with us. So welcome. Welcome. And so this is a great time. Um, we want to welcome you guys here and for our friends who are watching virtually. Thank you for joining us here on Facebook, whether you're watching us live or later. And this is an awesome weekend because. Jam on the Quad is starting. So just like how we have worship on the Quad, where it's a great, safe way for us to worship together, our kids can join together tonight, 5 to 7, for Jam on the Quad. Lots of fun games, an awesome Bible story, and even some dinner. We also have a really cool event coming up for our Halloween. It's on October 25th. There's going to be more information coming out called Trunk or Trail. So it's our traditional trunk or treat with an added Halloween trail to it. So if you are interested in being involved, helping with setup, or being a trunker, contact the office, please. And for those who have been around a while, this is one of our this is our big church outreach of October. So this is one of those all hands on deck, whether you're one month old or 1,000 years old. It, it is the one time where we can reach out well to the community. We'll be marketing like crazy, trying to get... Uh, folks to come here, and so we just have a shot to get to know them. So um, it is one of our great out outreaches. So please do call Tina, call Madison, uh, get involved some way, either by giving candy, bringing a trunk, uh, and giving candy away, or whatever it may be. So we're looking forward to that. It should be a mm-hmm. great event for the uh, community. The last thing I want to do is I want to make sure that we greet each other. And so you guys lock eyeballs with someone, tell them I love you with sign sign language, find somebody who sees you. And for our friends virtually, this is a great time to put something in the comments, say hi to somebody, or send a text or an email to someone you love, tell them hi, that you love them. So we have an opportunity now that we've gathered physically or we've gathered over Facebook that we might worship God well. Now let's prepare our hearts as we join together in the call to worship as seen in your bulletin or on your screen. We are here in the name of Christ Jesus. Now it shall be given to you. Seek right now and you will find. Knock right now and the door will be opened. All All who who ask ask, receive. receive. Those Those who who seek, seek find. The The door door will be open open for the the one one who knocks. knocks. Let Let us us worship worship God. worship a strong yet tender and graceful God, a God that continues to pursue a personal and intimate relationship with each one of us. Let us get rid of all the junk in our heart that keeps us from that close relationship with him. Please join me as we say together the prayer of confession as seen in your bulletin or on your screen. God of grace, you have called us to give ourselves completely to you. Yet we often hold back part for worldly pursuits. 
Lord, in your mercy, forgive us. You have given us the gift of time. You give us time to serve, time to learn, time to grow, time to share. We spend our time serving self. Lord, in your mercy, forgive us. You provide us with opportunity to serve in numerous ways using the talents and abilities we have been given. We tend to hide our gifts. Lord, in your mercy, forgive us. You have provided even the least among us with more financial resources than most of the world. We resist sharing because of fear for future. Lord, in your mercy, forgive us and help us plan to reinvest the talents, treasures, and time with which we have been blessed. Now hear us as we silently lift up our personal prayers of confession. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, you and I, we are forgiven. Our scripture lesson this morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 7, verses 7 through 12. Please follow along in your Bibles at home or as printed in your bulletin here on the quad. Now hear the word of the Lord. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks, the door will be open. Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake. If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Mr. Ken. I'm sure... Reagan Ormond, if he is here this morning, is upset because he had the 50 worst Hebrew names when he read scripture this last Sunday. Ken, he's going to be jealous you didn't have any of those. Um, Y'all look like you're comfortable out there, which is great. And I know if you're home, I know you are comfortable as well at home, perhaps in your pajamas with coffee. I'm jealous. But I know how to make you uncomfortable. Ready? We're going to talk about money. How does that work? Y'all starting to squirm a little bit? Heard uh, someone say the other day that I have enough money to live comfortably the rest of my life as long as I die by next Tuesday. Then someone else kind of just postulated this. They said, if time truly is money, then is an ATM a time machine? Something to think about, just kind of dwell on that. Uh, we get tense when we talk about money in the church. We just do. We tighten up. And I looked up some, some folks, and this I don't think this helps us, but here's just some well-known pastors and their net worth. Uh, just to throw this out, uh, Joel Osteen, $50 million. More locally here in the Carolinas, Stephen Fertig, $55 million. T.D. Jakes, one of my favorite preachers, $147 million. Pat Robertson, $500 million. Kenneth Copeland, $760 million. The problem is sometimes we get a little jaded in church, and we're like, man, I don't really want to talk about money. Jesus never talked about money. Well, Jesus had 39 parables he told. Guess how many were about money? 11. It's about a third of them. In fact, over 2,300 verses in Scripture talk about what to do with money and how to handle money. The Gospels, over one-tenth of the points of the Gospels, 288 of them deal with money and how to handle money. Why in the world would Scripture, why in the world would Jesus spend so much time talking about money and using money as an example? And the answer, I think, is found in Matthew 6.21, where Jesus tells us that wherever your money is, 
and you guys know how to finish this up, there your heart will be also. And so it's important for us to, to have a healthy um, uh, glance, a healthy look, a healthy thought life on money and what to do. And so it's important that we talk about that even in church. And so I want to pause and ask God to open up our minds as well as our hearts that we might receive his word this morning. Let's pray together. God, we pray that as you um, are moving around here, that you would open our hearts, that as we open your word, that you would uh, help it sink into our hearts, plant it deep down. Help us to remember what you want us to remember. Help us to grab what you want us to grab today. Father God, we pray that you would have your way with us, your servants. In Jesus' name. Amen. The first really hit we have of tithing comes early, early on in the Bible. Genesis 14, where we read this starting in verse 18. Then Melchizedek, the king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. We would say that's kind of a forerunner of communion. He was the priest of God Most High, and he blessed Abram, saying, Blessed be Abram by God Most High, creator of heaven and earth, and praise be to God Most High. Who delivered your enemies into your hand. Then Abram gave him a tenth of everything. That's the first time you see that showing up where someone's giving away a tenth. That's him. Apparently that was Abram's way to let Melchizedek know that because he was the high priest of God that he wanted to honor God. And so we see through the Old Covenant, through the Old Testament, we see some rules. The Old Testament is rule-based. Now we'll get to the New Testament next Sunday where we see it's relationship-based. But the Old Testament, the Old Covenant, is rules-based, and you get three basic tithing rules. And the first one um, I've seen labeled the whole tithe, the W-H-O-L-E tithe. And, and we're going to find that in Numbers chapter 18, starting in verse 21, where we read, I give to the Levites, I'm going to pause there, the Levites were the tribe, they didn't get their own land, they didn't get their own stuff when they moved into the promised land, they were charged with being the caretakers of the temple. They were charged to be the priest who did the worship. And so we would probably put a, a, you know, a guess that that's current day church workers or clergy or whatever. And so you get, I give to the Levites all the tithes in Israel as their inheritance in return for the work they do while serving at the tent of meeting, which is the tabernacle. From now on, the Israelites must not go near the tent of meeting, or they will bear the consequences of their sin and die. It is the Levites who are to do the work at the tent of meeting and bear the responsibility for any offenses they commit against it. It goes on to say that they will receive no inheritance among the Israelites. Instead, I give to the Levites as their inheritance the tithes that the Israelites present as an offering to the Lord. Excuse me. <coughs> That word tithe, some people fight over. It's the Hebrew word, it's masar, and it really is a mathematical word. It's one-tenth or the tenth of. And so that's what he's getting at here. That's the whole tithe. And basically they say, bring that into the temple or the tabernacle, and then give it to the Levites. That's their inheritance, if you will, to help run everything. So that's the whole tithe. Well, then you get in Deuteronomy where it talks about the worship tithe is what people have labeled this. Be sure, this is in Deuteronomy 14. Be sure to set aside a tenth of all that your fields produce each year. Eat the tithe of your grain, the new wine and the olive oil, and the firstborn of your herds and flocks, in the presence of the Lord your God at the place he will choose as a dwelling for his name, in other words, the temple, so that you may learn to revere the Lord, your God always. Then you and your household shall eat there in the presence of the Lord your God and rejoice. You can see there's a worship service going on. They're supposed to, a second tithe, this worship tithe, they were to bring in. And then they, if you will, as a congregation, to worship together with food. You, you know, maybe that's the forerunners of being a Presbyterian, is you can't have fellowship without food. And so they're, they're coming in together with a sacrifice, uh, and, and they're having a big uh, church party where they honor God through the giving of one-tenth of their stuff, and then they have this huge meal, which is part of the flock and the fruit and the grain that they bring They bring in. So that's the worship tithe. You get the whole tithe, that's that tithe, then you get the worship tithe, and you're thinking, I hope there's no more tithes. Incorrect. Next few verses down in Deuteronomy 14, verse 28, you get this. 
um, at the end of every three years, bring all the tithes of that year's produce and store it in your towns so that the Levites, who have no allotment or inheritance of their own, and the foreigners, the fatherless and the widows who live in your towns, may come and eat and be satisfied. And so that the Lord your God may bless you in all the works of your hands. So we have a whole tithe, a worship tithe, and now a welfare tithe, which is every three years. So if you're like me, the first thing I did was start to think, what does that come out to be? You know, I got to put that Clemson math, math minor to work. So I was like, okay, 10% of the whole is 10, 10%. I got that. Well, now you got 90% left. So 10% of that for the worship tithe, is really 0.9 or 9%. So now we're at 19%. But then every third year, you have to tithe on what's left, which is 81%. So 10% of that is 8.1%. And you're correct. When you divide that by three, you get 2.7%. When you add that to 19, you guys with me? You get 21.7%. So sometimes we think like, man, this one-tenth, that tithe is a killer. Old Testament, rule-based. It added up, if you spread out the welfare tithe across three years, it adds up to about 21.7% is what folks tithe. Now, hopefully that's grabbing your attention in many ways. One, maybe in horror as you grab your hip pocket. But two, hopefully it's grabbing your attention that, wow, Apparently, God was pretty serious when he set up the rules for people to follow that they really do this. So hopefully the question of why is coming up. Now, as you read in these same areas, and I'd ask you to read when you get home in Numbers 18 and Deuteronomy 14 and into Exodus 20, that you would read in there and you would grab a hold of why God sets up his rules. You know, why does God, in, in, like in other words, why did Abram give 10% to, to Melchizedek? Did Melchizedek need it? We don't know. But I don't think that's why he gave it to him. He didn't check his IRS forms out, right? Why are we called to be tithing? Does God need your money? I'm going to throw this out. I think God uh, will not be thwarted by you or me or anybody. So in one sense, you can say, no, he doesn't need our money. So why is this important? I think the answer in scripture that keeps coming as you read all these areas is he wants us to be thankful and he wants to acknowledge that he has delivered us. You saw that language in here, that he's the God who delivers. And so he's calling us to be thankful and he's calling us to acknowledge that. Now, still, if you're living in these times, the Old Testament, the old covenant times, 21.7% is kind of scary. I saw a little cartoon the other day of a father-son at a restaurant where the father was trying to teach the kid about tipping. And he goes, okay, and we tip 20%. And as he was showing the kid how to do that, the kid said, then why do we, give, why do we only give God 10%? And you think about that, and you're like, huh, that's a good question. Do we worship the waiter or waitress more than we do God? No. And so all this Old Testament language, all these rules are there for a reason. And that reason is so that God's people will be thankful, yes, will appreciate God delivering them from, in our case, sin, yes. But it's even more than that. And, and I'm going to read out of uh, Deuteronomy 8, starting in verse 17, where he says, You may say to yourself, My power and the strength of my hands have produced this wealth for me. In other words, I did this myself. But remember the Lord, your God. That word remember comes all throughout Scripture or the antithesis, do not forget. But remember the Lord, your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth and so confirms his covenant, which he swore to your ancestors as it is today. If you ever forget the Lord, your God, and follow other gods and worship and bow down to them, I testify against you today that you will be surely destroyed. What is that about? God wants us not to forget. Positive spin, God wants us to remember him. Why would God have to remind you and me to remember him? I think because he created us. <laughs> he knows that when we're fat and happy, when we're full, when things are going awesome, we tend to get a little complacent. We tend to get a little less thankful. We tend to quit remembering all that God 
has done for us, and we get a little of this what have you done lately syndrome in our lives. And so that happens. Deuteronomy chapter 5, three, three uh, chapters early in 515, he kind of echoes it with different words. He says, remember that you were slaves in Egypt. For us, you would say, remember that we were dead in our sins. We were slaves to sin. And that the Lord your God brought you out, delivered you, out with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord your God has commanded you to observe the Sabbath day. Have you ever wondered about the Ten Commandments? Why did God have the Ten Commandments? Why does God tell them, number four, remember the Sabbath and keep it holy? Why would he tell them that? Well, he tells us right here. He tells us so that they won't forget, so that they'll remember. God gave rules in the old promise, in the old covenant. Now, the folks focused on the rules and kind of quit focusing on God, and it got them in trouble. But the rules were intended to help us not to forget, but to remember all that God has done, all that God is doing, and all that God will do. So you and I, we're living in the New Testament, the New Covenant, the New Promise, right? And we'll get there next Sunday, and you're going to see it moves from rules to relationship. But we'll get there. But for this Sunday, I want you to see the rules had a purpose. The rules weren't there to focus on the rules. Sometimes my uh, boys, when I say, you don't do this or we need to do this, they focus on that rule and they're missing the purpose. Like, we get together and we FaceTime Jake every Sunday evening, and I'm making Jake start the FaceTime to us. Why? Is that a rule that I just want to destroy his life on Sunday evenings? He thinks so. <laughs> But it's so that we can have family time, right? Through the wonders of the spiritual act of Facebook, you know, or of FaceTime, sorry. That, you know, that's why we do it. That's the purpose of that rule. Rules have a purpose. Let's focus on the purpose, not the rule. But the rules are there. That's why God does the rules is so that we'll remember him. And so I really want to really hit that hard. The, the big so what this morning. So what do I do with this old promise, old covenant stuff? Because we're living in the new covenant. Let's learn from it, is what I would say. Let's learn from it. I don't think God dictates rules anymore that we're to give 21.7% back to him. What's the purpose of that Old Testament rule? That we would be thankful, that we would um, honor him, that we'd appreciate him, that we would remember all that he had done for us. So may we do those things. So here's my thing. I don't know if you tithe or don't tithe, um, but we're moving in kind of a stewardship season where we're starting to talk about that starting next Sunday. I just wanted to get a head start on it to get us thinking about money in a different light, to be thinking about tithing in a different light. So I just want to challenge you. If you've never tithed, try it for 90 days. Try it for three months, kind of the rest of the year here. Just give it a whirl and see what God does. God moves when we start to honor him. And so I just want to throw that out as a challenge. And I'm going to give you three words, kind of your so what of the day. Honor, remember, and reach. Honor, remember, and reach. May we honor God through the giving of his money that he gave us and trusted to us. May we honor him with that. Number two, may we remember God and worship him only. That kept coming up in his scripture. And number three, as we give, we're able to reach out. There's things that we can do as a body, as a church, that we can't, I can't do as an individual. And so we are able, some of you are not able to be here on Monday and Tuesday from 11 to 1. Well, that's when we give food to folks who need food in Polly's Island. It's a great thing we do, but we all can't be available then, but we can all help fund that. We have a group meets here every Tuesday of disabled folks called the Joy, the Joy School. A lot of us can't be here on Tuesday morning, but we can help be a part of that. On and on. So we have youth groups on Sunday night, and some of us can't, aren't available or just say, that's just not my calling. We can all be a part of that. You and I are able to reach out with Trunk or Trail coming up on Halloween or on the 25th. We have an opportunity to reach out into Polly's Island. There are families that don't really know about us. So we have an opportunity to reach out to these families 
that they might come to know us, they might come back, they may worship with us, they may start growing in faith here, come to know Christ. Y'all, we have an opportunity to thank God and acknowledge him and to remember him, but also to reach out. So I want to encourage you. I think I probably squashed you and you're like, man, rules, rules, rules. Remember why. God gives us rules that we might what? Remember that we might be thankful, that we might honor him. Let us pray together. Father God, um, as we encounter Old Testament rules, may we not just blow them off, but may we stop and say, why? Lord, why did you give this rule? You tell us blatantly when it comes to giving and tithing and all those three different tithes, it's so that we might honor and remember you. Father God, help us, help us to, to see ourselves as a vehicle, as a vessel that you can fill, that you can work through. And I pray selfishly, Lord, that you would use us, this church, your body, your children, to reach out to Polly's Island and that together we might change your world through your Holy Spirit. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you're able, let us stand and let us sing together. Nope. We're singing by ourselves. That was a false alarm. <laughs> you would know welcome to sing along <laughs> if you know the song. <laughs> you can sing along with us. <laughs> sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace in the mansions bright and blessed he'll prepare for us a place when we all get to heaven what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus we'll sing and shout the victory Clouds will overspread the sky, but when traveling days are over, not a shadow, not a sigh. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. Let us then be true and faithful, trusting, trusting serving every day. Just one glimpse of Him in glory will the toils of life repay. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. We'll sing and shout. We'll sing and shout the victory. Sing and shout. We'll sing and shout the victory. We'll sing and shout and shout. We'll sing and shout the victory. We'll sing and shout and shout. We'll sing and shout the victory. Onward to the prize before us, soon his beauty will behold. Soon those pearly gates will open, we will tread those streets of gold. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. Shout the victory when we all see Jesus. We'll sing and shout the victory.
Thank you, Seaman, Singin', Simons, and Robin. All right, why don't we, um, as a community, whether we're on Facebook or whether we're out here in the beautiful uh, weather of the quad, why don't we all turn our hearts together to God and pray as one body? Lord, uh, you are a God who delivers. That's who you are. You are a God who redeems. You are a God who loves, guides, and protects. So we want to give you praise and honor, and we pray that you would help us not to forget you because the truth is sometimes we don't take the time to remember all that you have done for us. And so we pray, Father God, that you would help us to remember you, that we wouldn't forget all that you have done, that we would do things throughout the day that turn our heart toward yours. Lord, we pray that you might move within these prayers. There's so many folks battling cancer within our midst, and so we lift them up to you. Think of Charles Lee and Brenda Lawson, and Jesse Deemer, Carolyn Duell, Pat Body and Carolyn Wolf, and Rene Dent and Betty O'Brien, Harold East. Father, we pray that you would be uh, eradicating cancer cells from their body. In Jesse's case, thank you for all that you have done to bring him to wholeness. Father God, we pray for Keith, David, and Danielle that you would help them each and every morning and day to make wise choices to follow you. May they rely on you. Lord God, there's folks who are just um, recovering. We pray you be with Bill Sheehan, be with Bob Babb, be with Karen, with, a photo, with Brian Fotorero and Jack Moree, Jim White. Think of Andrew's mother, Georgia, who was in a car accident. Pray you be with her. Pray for the Monics, Father God, Jean and Aaron, um, as they deal with COVID. May you be helping them, um, their bodies, to recover. Lord God, we think of Norma Mead from her fall, and pray you be with Norma and Jan Shepard as she recovers. Father God, thank you for being with us even through the hard times. Thank you for um, never leaving our side. We think of Joan Miles. We pray you be with her, with her heart condition, Father God. Lord, there's folks of us who just can't get out. Um, there's folks of us who may be a little afraid to get out, but folks who just can't. And so we pray you be with them, Lord God, that you would fill them, that they would know we love them, and that we're praying for them. May your spirit, Lord, move within them. And I pray you'd make us praying people this, this week. May we remember on the back of the bulletin um, our congregation and pray each and every day as we pray for these folks, the Mark, Mark Haw, and, and we pray for the Hazards and the Helds and the Hicks and the Hairsholders. God, we pray that you would make us uh, cheerful prayers each and every day, especially for this body. And Lord God, we pray within our church today, we pray for the music and worship team and the folks like the Simons and Robin who give their gifts back to you in worship and the bell choir. And God, we just pray that you would... Um, help us to be thankful for them sharing their gifts, and it may even um, spur us on to share our gifts that you have given us, whatever they may be. As far as the local church, we pray for God's house just up the road, and pray for the Ford family. Thank you for Johnny Ford. Pray you use Johnny and his congregation, uh, that he would uh, help folks fall deeper and deeper in love with you and be with Josh, his oldest, as he's away at school in Columbia, and be with Caleb and Lynn. Father God, Use the Fords in mighty ways in this community. Lord God, there's so many more people we could pray for, and they're on our hearts right now, and so we lift them up to you in this moment of silence. God, you know uh, even the folks that we can't really remember right now. We pray that you would be with them and their needs. And it's because of all that you have done in Jesus that we know that you move through prayer. And so, Father, we pray with that prayer that Jesus taught his disciples as we say together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. 
Amen. Now we can sing together as God's people the hymn, Seek Ye First. started off as a rainy, rainy time. If you stayed up last night, the monsoons hit us. It was supposed to be 80% chance of rain this morning. Look at this beautiful sky. Yeah, 3 o'clock maybe things change, but the point is, this is God's beautiful, beautiful land that he's given us, Polly's Island, that we can, we can worship him well each and every day. And so I prayed that we would remember God that whatever rules we may encounter in the Old Testament, whether it's about tithing or not, that they may call us not to focus on a rule, but to focus on the fact that God, your Father in heaven, has redeemed you, and he goes with you. And so as you go, may you know that your Father in heaven loves you like crazy, and may you slow in the life-giving, life-renewing, life-transforming presence of Jesus Christ the Son, so that together, you and I might go as a body of believers with the power of the Holy Spirit to love Polly's Island and God's world. In Jesus' name, amen.